Welcome to Apostolic Archive. We have gathered many wonderful sermons through the years and we have decided to share them with the world. We hope you enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel. Please like the video and comment with something you take away from this message. Also, hit the bell below so you can receive an update as soon as we upload new content. Blessings. Go ahead. Go ahead. Make yourself. Oh, you're done. <laughs> you're ready to preach. Uh, but anyway, no matter where we were going as a family, we were always going forward. Didn't make any difference where we were going. But anyway, that sort of stuck with me when I was thinking about this particular uh, reading that I gave to you where the Lord spoke to Moses. And he said Israel had come to the Red Sea and they were parked there. And they uh, looked like they were about to be uh, taken prisoner and led back into the land of bondage. And the scripture says that they were crying out. And the Lord asked a question. He said, why are all these people crying and carrying on? He said, I've got one word for all these people. You tell them to go forward. Yes. In other words, their answer to their cry is to go forward. Oh, of course, uh, to certainly to their, in their behalf, there stood before them a great body of water, uh, which was called the Red Sea. And from their particular vantage point, they had gone as far as they could go. Yeah. Now, I just want to stop there for a moment and say this, that these are many tra times transitional moments when we come to the place that we have gone what appears to us as far as we can go. When you come to the place you've gone as far as you can go, always remember this, there's about to be a transitional moment All right. in your life. This is not just any other time. This is a very special time. Amen. The Lord did not say back up. He didn't say move to the right hand or to the left. He said, I've got one message. Amen. I gave you this message when you left Egypt, and I'm giving it to you again. Amen. You continue to go forward. Nothing's changed. You may have reached a place where you feel like there's no other options. Everything has shut down, but he said the plan is still the same. Right. Amen. The plan is still the same. I don't read anywhere where God said, sorry, I didn't figure on us having to deal with the Red Sea. No. I don't remember God saying, oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I did not think about the fact that we're going to have to deal with the Red Sea. No, he didn't. No, that. he never said that. He said, you may feel like there's no other thing that you can do but just stop and be annihilated and consumed by the past that is rapidly catching up with you but he said I've got a message for you go forward and they said well we don't see how we're going to go forward he said you're going to go forward the message hasn't changed I want to say to someone here today or to all of us in general the message has never changed about right. God's will in our All right. lives. God's will for our lives is to continue to go forward. You see, the crossing, this place of transition, this place where it seems that we can't go any further, this particular place is so important to your salvation. That's what he was telling Israel. This is an important place to your salvation. I'm saying this to everybody, not only us that are, that are sitting here in this building, but all of those that are listening. You've come to a place and you can't move forward. All right. Know this. This is the will of God. Yeah. This is so important to your salvation. Yes, amen. This particular transitional moment is so important, amen, to your deliverance. <laughs> This particular experience of the Red Sea, Paul called it a baptism. First Corinthians 10, he said it is a baptism. All of Israel was baptized, he All said, right. under the cloud yes. and in the sea. The Red Sea was not an improbable event. It was a very personal, personal and important opportunity. The Red Sea was necessary to their deliverance right. and their salvation because they were baptized there. Something happened in the Red Sea. Yes. Now we could go to the New Testament and you'll find this, that 
when you receive the name, amen, the name that is above every name. You did not get it when you started talking in tongues. No. You got it when you were baptized in water. Right. You were buried in the beautiful Hallelujah. name of Jesus Praise Christ. God. Amen. You went through the Red Sea. Yeah. You went through the Red Sea. That's right. the baptism. Amen. When God put His stamp on you. Amen. When God put His name on you. It was at the place where you said, I just can't go any further. What God was saying, this is as far as the flesh can go. All right. The flesh can't go any further. Hallelujah. But he said the spirit is going to go further. Yes. The spirit is going to take you places you never thought that you'd ever go. You see, the Red Sea, my friend, was necessary. The Red Sea was a life-changing experience. It was an experience where their minds and their hearts had come to a conclusion. This is going to be a God thing. Amen. This is going to be a God thing. Amen. 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 We can't swim across. Our flesh can't get us across. Praise God. Amen. And you can tell by the Spirit, they certainly didn't have the faith to believe anything because they said, we're all just going to die. Yeah. With the God, we're all back there in the land of Egypt. Right. But it was then that God did something. Uh -huh. They couldn't do anything. But then God did something. And God did it. Amen. When you can't do anything, that's when God does something. That's when God says, you're an important place. Amen. This is not a surprise to me. No. I knew this in the beginning. I knew that you would come to this life-changing place. All he right. said, for this right. reason in Exodus right. 14 and 13, he said, these Egyptians that you've seen today, he said, ye shall see them again no more. No more. No more forever. Forever. I have to believe that there were powerful people that were in pursuit of Israel because they had lost the manpower that they had depended upon so desperately to make brick and to bake the brick. Amen. These were things that were necessary to build the walls and build the houses. And it was the slave labor of Israel that made that possible. And when the Pharaoh said, you know what, I changed my mind. Let's go get them and bring them back. We need those men. We need those slaves. So, well, I can assure you that their employers were right in the group with everybody else. The ones that laid the stripes on their back. Yeah. The ones that pest them every day. The ones that called them dogs and demanded labor of them without any kind of recompense, uh, even to justify their labor. These were hateful and hurtful things uh, that were chasing them, and they finally came to a place they could go no further, and here comes the past. All right. Here comes the horrors of the past. I'm uh, just about to catch up with them, uh, and they're crying out. And the Lord said, Why are you crying? Uh, he said, my plan hasn't changed. Right. I know you're looking at something right. and you don't see how in the world you're going to get All through right. it or on. how you're going to get over it. That's right. But he said, my plan is still the same. Still the same. Amen. Amen. I didn't get in this to quit. As Brother Peter said a while ago, he said, we're going to go forward. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. May I say this? I don't know what God's going to do for you. But I can tell you this, he's about to change the thing that you think is impossible, uh, amen, to a God All right. yeah. And God's about Praise to do God. a God thing. I believe it. I said God's about to do a God thing. Can somebody say praise the Lord? I think of David in Psalm 77 and verse 2. It sounds so much like many of us many times. He said, in my day of my trouble, I sought the Lord. He said, my soul ran in the night and I ceased not. My soul refused to be comforted. David was saying, something is bothering me to the extent it's like an open sore. Yes. He said, it runs all night long. I'm in pain. I'm in agony. I'm dealing with a particular thing in my life that is slowly, slowly draining the strength oh, uh, out of my body. Yeah. He went on to say, will the Lord cast off forever? Will he will it be favorable no more? Amen. David was at a point he said, God, is this is this as far as you're going to take me? 
Is this as far as you're going to take me? He said in verse 8, Is his mercy clean gone forever? All right. Doth his promise fail evermore? Verse 9, he said, Hath God forgotten to be gracious? Hath, hath he in his anger shed up his tender mercies? And he said, This is my infirmity. But he said this, But I will remember the years of the right hand of the Most High. All right. Hallelujah. The right. What he was saying is, I'm going to remember when God stepped out of my authority, took dominion over everything else, and said, I'm going to make a way where there doesn't seem right. to be a way. He said, I'm going to start thinking about the times when God would open doors that seemed impossible. When God would make a way that seemed impossible. He All said, right. my sore has been running in the night. He said, my strength is leaving my spirit. But he said, I'm going to have a change of mind right here. Amen. I'm not going to think about the past. And I'm not going to think All about right. the heartache. See, man. I'm going to start thinking about all those times oh, that God right. did Amen. it with me. Hallelujah. I'm going to start thinking about all those times that God stretched forth. Amen. You've got to think about it. Praise and God. And in verse 11, he said, I will remember the I'll works remember. of the Lord. Yes. Surely I will remember thy wonders of old. And he said in verse 12, I will meditate also on all thy work and talk of all thy doings. That's what a testimony service is. Right. I said, that's what a testimony service is. That's what happens when we come into the house of the Lord. And different ones begin to talk about, I remember when God touched me. I remember when God supplied a financial need. Or I remember when it looked like things were impossible and I couldn't go any further. Amen. In verse 13, David said, Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. I heard some of you say, well, I'm so glad to be in church. Yes. I'm so glad to be back with the family right. of God. Uh, I've lost my way, but when I got back to the house of God, uh, I found out this is the way. Yes. Amen. His way is in the sanctuary. Yes, it is. Uh, I God. said His way is in the sanctuary. Yeah. The more we elevate and praise God, the brighter the light comes on. Uh, and then we begin hallelujah. to see the possibilities. Uh, that God is going to open for our families. Amen. 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 Can somebody say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, Amen. hallelujah. Thou art God. Oh, yeah. Glory. Thou doest wonders. Yes. Thou hast declared thy strength among the people. Where? In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. In the sanctuary. Amen. In the sanctuary. Amen. In the sanctuary. Amen. Amen. In the sanctuary. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Until when Israel got into that Red Sea and the cloud covered them. Amen. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move. That Red Sea opened up. You talk about revival. The Bible said Mary picked up a tambourine and started dancing. Yes. Amen. She was dancing on one side. Oh. And all their problems were pouring in on the other side. And they were being buried in the middle. All right. Amen. And Mary was on the other side. Oh, of the yeah. Amen. And Praise the God. They picked up their tambourine and all the women started shouting yes. and praising God. Where did they do that? In a place where somebody said, nothing good can happen here. All right. We cannot go any further than right here. All right. This is as far as it goes. But God said, I'm going to turn this into a place of worship. But you're going to find that this is going to be a place called the sanctuary. All oh, right. Hallelujah. They got on the other side of that Red Sea. I tell you, friend, their attitude had changed. Their spirit had changed. Yes. Their mindset had changed. You say, preacher, what are you trying to tell me? I'm saying, hold on. Woo. Don't give up. Don't no. quit. Don't go back. Hallelujah. God's got a plan. Yes. I said, God's got a plan. And God's oh, going to work his God, plan. That's right. Go say, go the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you say, but preacher, I've got my life in a mess. There's so many Woo. sins on, and there's so many problems. Yes. I don't see how it's all going to work out. Amen. Well, it's going to be a God thing. Yes. It's not by mind. It's not by power. It's not by All your right. mind, it's not by your flesh, but God's going to do it. I said God's going to do right. it. God's going to put your God's going to do it. Amen. God's going to heal your body. Woo. God's going to bless your finances. You're not going to be able to put it on paper. It's going to be a God thing. Praise God. Amen. Let's go forward. Let's keep it. Yeah, glory. Amen. 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 Amen.
case wrestling with a running sore of affliction. However, if this is the place and conditions where God works, God works. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. I think sometimes it surprises the devil that he's been responsible for building more churches. <laughs> I really do. Amen. I think he deserves a little credit. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Because there's something that Sister God said a while ago about grace. Yes. You know why grace works? Because nothing else is working. That's right. Can I say that again? You know why grace is working? Because nothing else is working. That's right. That's where grace works. Is when nothing else Woo, is working. I like that. Amen. When parts just don't come together. Amen. And the season doesn't seem to cooperate. Uh, and the returns are slim. And the investment is great. But you're not getting in returns. And you're ready to quit and call it, amen, the end. Uh, and then God steps in. Yeah. This is where God likes to build churches. Woo. This is in the sanctuary of the Lord. Hallelujah. David said, I remember the things that God has done. Israel crossed two rivers. Remember this. They crossed the Red Sea and they crossed Jordan. Right. In your relationship with God, you're going to cross two places. Amen. The first one's in the Red Sea. Amen. The Red Sea, this is where the wheels and the bodies of the enemy All right. remain as a testimony of faith of the enemy to try to take you back into Egypt. All right. Every now and then go back to your baptism. Right. Every now and then go back to your baptism and look deep in the water. And you're going to see that everything that was chasing you, God buried it right there. Right. He buried it right there. The second river is the Jordan River. And there was a memorial that was there. But it was testifying of God's ability to take you forward. Not take you back, no. but to take you forward. Yeah. Jordan was a river of testimony that said, hey, I'm taking you into the land of promise. All right. Amen. The Red Sea All was a right. testimony that the enemy tried to take you back. Uh -huh. It's full of wagon wheels and chariot wheels. It's full, amen, of the axles and the, and the decaying bodies of those that tried to say that God wasn't able. Amen. But it was that which tried to take you back. The Jordan, amen, represents the power of God to take you forward. All right. Our forward progress is in our relationship with God. All God's right. promises. A continual transitioning of life-changing events. One place after another that says it ain't going to happen. One place after another that says you come to a dead end street. Yes. But those are the places that God builds memorials. Yeah. Those are the things that make you and I who All right, amen. Always remember that. Praise God. Praise if there God. were no Red Seas and no Jordan Rivers, my friend, we would not be who we are today. Tonight, God, amen. Amen. I thought of my sweet granddaughter over here testifying a while ago. Amen. My, she just had me on the verge of tears. I, I could just think about her crying here. Amen. amen. The older I get, yeah, I cry over anything. Amen. Brother Joe. <laughs> It's, it's, a, it's a grandfather thing. Amen. But uh, I thought as she was talking about uh, praying that God would open a door for her so she could be around some young people and be in the church here. Amen. But I'll tell you, Juliana, that's some growing experience in yes. your heart. Right. Amen. That's some things God's doing in you as a young lady living for God, building a relationship with God, going through some stuff. You gotta go through some got stuff, to, folks. Got Amen. Anybody that hasn't been through anything really is probably not worth a whole lot of anything. No. Amen. Easy come, easy go. Amen. One well, lady said one time, I don't understand you, Pentecostals. Every time I talk to you, you're talking about facing the devil, running into trouble, dealing with the devil. <laughs> she said, I don't ever deal with it. That old preacher said, You never will, honey, as long as you're going the same direction. That's it. Goes. That's it. I know you've heard that, but there's a lot of truth in it. <laughs> Amen. But when you take a different new chart, a different course for your life, you're going to run into the devil. That's right. The devil's going to try to put his foot down and say you're not going any further. And God said, devil, you just inspired me to build another church. Praise God to build another sanctuary. Yeah. Amen. You know why I say that? Because it's those places that you and I go back to and we remember where the Jerry High brought us out. 
We remember how it brought us through. We remember how it supplied our needs. And we go back to those places and we just have church all over again. That's the reason I tell you sometimes all right. to go back and remember what God did for That's your family. Right. Remember Amen. what God Praise did for your God. children. And if you haven't got anything else to worship God about, just worship God about Woo. those sanctuaries are still standing. Those places of worship are still there. All right. Go back to where he healed when you're little Praise children. God. Go yes. back to where he fed you. Go back to where he closed the All right. Go back to where he gave you a job. Go back to where he answered a prayer and just have church all over. Those sanctuaries oh. are still there. Praise God. Amen. I went some five years ago. It seems hard to believe it's been that long ago, but I think it's been around five years ago. I went back to the place where that old mercury pulled in. Huh. Amen. So it could pull out going forward. And uh, I went out there, and there's that same church out of, uh, out of blocks, cement blocks. And if you ever know anything about Arizona, things don't rot out there. <laughs> I mean, things just stay pretty much the way they are. And I couldn't get in the door, but I got to one of the old rollout windows, and I just kept pulling on it, and I watched the handles. Every time I pulled up, a little handle would reverse I got it back further and further and further, and then I got my camera in there, and I looked about behind the pulpit, and, and there was an old picture. Praise God. Same old picture. When I was 10 years old, Sister Dean, I sat there, and I watched that minister take that person and put it down in that water, say it, that name of Jesus. Yes. I now baptize you for the remission of sins. And I saw a little 10-year-old boy sitting in the pew watching that man of God baptize people. Hey, man, you know what? It's still there. That old church is still there even right now. You can go on Google and still find it. It's sitting right there. And before I left, I reached up and got a piece of that church and put it in a sack. And I said, I'm going to take it home. And I still got it somewhere at the house. Just a piece of that old church uh, because that was a place where I worshipped uh, when I was 10 years old. All right. Uh, and I watched young people get the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I watched God bless, amen, a little small group of people between 50 and 80 people. Amen, magnify God. Uh, amen, the southern part of Arizona. Hallelujah, it's still there. I'm here to tell you, just as much as that literal place is still there, there's some places of sanctuary where God has brought you to a place and oh, you didn't yes. think you could go any further. Right. And He turned it into a place of worship. And the next thing you knew, you were on the other side. And you were shouting the victory and thanking God for answered prayer. If you don't ever have another reason to worship God, just go back to some of those places where God delivered you and God saved you oh. and God healed you. And just begin to dance and pray and worship God in the Amen. sanctuary. Praise David God. said, I found the way. And he Praise said, it was in the sanctuary. Clap your hands up to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Our father progress is in our relationship with God's promise. Thank you, Jesus. A continual transition in life's events. Every challenge is an opportunity. It's a time to transition. Maybe we need to do like the McGuire family did in 1961. We need to lose our reverse. Yeah. Amen. Maybe we just need to lose our reverse. There you go. <laughs> Hallelujah. The devil says, back up. You say, devil. I ain't got to reverse. <laughs> My God, everywhere I go, I got to go forward. Oh. If I'm going in, I'm going forward. If I'm yes. coming out, I've got to yes. have a reverse. Yes. I don't have a reverse. I've got to, I've got to go in forward and come out forward. I live in a small town here, as many of you do, and you get to know pretty much everything. You drive down Main Street and read the pulse of the whole city, you know. And uh, I noticed the policeman. Sometimes we got three on duty or four. I don't know exactly how many, but, but nevertheless, the emergency workers. You pull into a parking lot, and I've yet to see one headed in to a parking space with the grill against the building. No, you know, whether it's fire truck, policeman, or ambulance, they always want to be sure they go forward. Right. They call that first responders. Yeah. They always want to be parked yeah. where they get out. And I've seen sometimes they'll get out and if they think there's just a chance 
that somebody parked in front of them, Brother Dollar, they go back there and get a cone. Walk right out there and sit in front. That's saying, yeah. don't get in front of this. Don't do it. Because I may need to go forward. And I don't want anything in my way. No. Maybe we need to invest in some cones. All right. Let the devil know. Regardless of what you think, I'm coming out of this in forward gear. Amen. I'm not a crab. I'm not backing out of this. I'm coming out of this thing like a racehorse. If God rings my bell and he says it's time for me to move, I'm moving. Right. I'm not backing into anything. I'm going with both eyes open and I'm going forward. Oh, hallelujah. Jehovah God said to him, he said, you tell those people. I know it looks bad and I know they feel like this is as far as they're going to go. And I've got one word for them. Follow. Forward. 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 Amen. Follow, 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 follow. I feel like God's got one word for a bucket like church in Glenwater. Church, follow, yes. follow, Amen. follow, Amen. follow, follow. But pastor, it doesn't look like the water's rolling back yet. Follow, Keep follow, going. follow. Uh, they'll roll back. Because if you look a little closer, yeah. there was a couple of old men out there in front. And one of them was by the name of Moses and the other one was Aaron. And they took that rod and they just laid it out over the water. And the Bible tells me when they laid it out over the water, brother, it started rolling back on the right, right. hand and on the left. Right. And the Bible said they went across on dry ground. Dry ground. Dry ground. Not wet, dry. God made a way. As the old timers said, where it seemed as though there was no way. Right. They went forward. Hallelujah. Next time you run into opposition, that seems to be insurmountable, and there's no way to get around and over it. Remember this: you're going through it. Yes. You're going through it. This too shall come. Some of our dear families tonight, as I'm coming to close, many of them are dealing with sickness, and you can say what you want to. We're all human. We're all human. We understand the limitations of our bodies, and it's easy to talk faith when you're feeling strong. That's right. Yeah, come on. Amen. But I tell you, when you're gasping for breath, and wonder if you're going to be able to breathe again. Yeah, you, you, like Sister Marcy said, you just love to know that people are praying. Amen. Amen. I told Sister Miller, I uh, own the texture just about every day. But I text her and I said, I want you to know we're praying. Yes. And she said, you just don't know how much that means to me and Amanda right now, to know that our church is praying. Praise God. Praise God. We can't see how it's going to happen, but there's something up there ahead of us that's fixing to roll the water back. Yes. All my responsibility is to just keep walking forward. Amen. When I get there, it's going to be all right. Yes. I said, when I get there, God's going to have taken care of it. Amen. 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 God's going to do it His Amen. way, and God's going to do it on His time schedule. All I've got to do is just take out the reverse and just make up my mind. I'm going to continue to go forward. Let's clap our hands under the Lord and thank you for the Lord. Come on, musicians. Amen. Let's make up our mind that what appears to be impassable is really going to be a God thing. It may seem to be impassable, but it's really going to be a God thing. It's where he proves forward is the only way to go. It's the place where he proves that forward is the only way to go. No church service that we ever have is a church service that is centered around people failing and believing that there's no way their lives can be improved. We don't have those kind of church services. We don't preach that. I don't care who they are, where they came from, what their pedigree is, what their financial status is. When they walk through that door, we've always got one message for them. It's going to get better from here. Yes. This is the first day of the rest of your life. Things are going to get better from here. Praise God. Amen. I ran into a little fellow the other day, and uh, I see him from time to time. He knows I'm a preacher, and when I walk into his place of business, you always holler out, Hello, preacher, come in. Well, if they don't know who I am, by that time they do. Everybody yeah. in line turns around and says, Who's the preacher? Is. And he's a young man, got a good heart. He's, he's going forward. He's moving in a, in a good direction. 
And he's like the rest of us. He's got, we want to go further than we've ever gone before. And uh, he said, well, he said, you know, I was having a Bible study uh, from a particular group, and he, for a particular group, and he said, I had a bunch of people come, and he said, some of them were homosexuals and different kinds of folks. And he said, the pastor came over and talked to him and said, you can't have that kind of a Bible study, you, but these people in here are like this. And I told him, he said, what do you think about that? I said, son, I said, if they're people, they're people. Right. <laughs> I don't care where they came from. I'm thinking about where they're headed. Yeah. Right. <laughs> they need salvation too. When they leave there, they're not going to want to go back backwards. They're going to go forwards. Right. Amen. When they walk in the door of this church, they're going to realize this is better yeah. than what I had. Right. Amen. This is the place where you go forward. Right. This is the sanctuary of the Most High. Oh, let's stand, clap our hands unto the Lord and sing a song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, there's victory ahead through the blood of Jesus. Victory ahead. I'm trusting in the Lord. I hear the conquerors tread. By faith, I see the big goal. Trusting in the Lord. Trusting in the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 